So the first image, this is really the first, this is a Bruce Weber image. You know, I grew up in Indiana looking at uh, fashion magazines like I'm sure all young boys did. And, uh, and I think, um, you know, being so far away from the real fashion world, you know, my whole, my whole concept of fashion, all of that was not through, through wearing the clothes or seeing them in a store, it all came through images. And, um, you know, looking through GQ and Vogue and all of that, and I think that's why photography came somewhat easily to me, because I like, think my eye had been so trained, you know, unconsciously been trained by just looking through magazines, looking through magazines, and, and even though at the time I didn't really pay attention to who the photographers were, I remember I was in Brooklyn, this is very true, I was in Brooklyn, and I had just moved to New York from Indiana, and I was missing my girlfriend, and, and I was living in Brooklyn, didn't know anybody in the city, and I was walking, I think, on Atlantic Avenue, and there was a little shop and had postcards, and I don't know why, but there was a postcard of this image, and I just stood there, and it, 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 it was the first photograph that ever actually moved me, that I actually felt something. It was actually maybe even the first piece of art. I liked art, I took a, you know, studied a lot of art when I was in school, but um, it never really had an emotional effect, and I don't know quite what it was about this image. I think probably because I missed my girlfriend, this idea of being very close and yet being very separate kind of in your own world, I think was something that I really related to in this image. And it's the first like real photograph I bought when I was finally able to get enough money. It was one of the first images I bought. But I think this kind of goes to this idea of, you know, this is a fashion photograph, but to me it's not really about fashion. It's the, the emotion that comes across in the image. And I think, you know, hopefully in my photographs, the, the strongest ones hopefully tell a story, hopefully give you an idea, maybe not of who that person really is, but maybe gives you um, a concept. Uh, it, as opposed to telling a story, I like to think my, my images start a story. And I think that's one of the things that really drew me to this image. It, it, it kind of... It doesn't tell you exactly what's going on. I think the facts, that's why I never say I'm a, a photojournalist. I think facts are really boring. But I think it starts a story. So this was one of the first images. This is another one that I bought when I had enough money, but it's an August Sander image. And you can probably see, if you know my, my images, the influence that an image like this had. Um, there was something I thought so... Uh, the, one of the things I think it's really interesting, especially in street photography, you know, fashion street photography has become really important lately, but there's always been an element of this in any of the photographers and a lot of the images that you're going to see, whether it's someone like August Sander like this, we'll look at a Brassai, we'll look at um, even a Bruce Davidson, you know, because of how we dress changes somewhat uh, often, even though this is an image of you know, he was trying to catalog uh, all the different kinds of aspect of life in Germany in the 20s and 30s and 40s. And it, I'm sure he was not thinking of this as a, a fashion image when he shot it. But because we don't dress this way, you can't help but look at the fashion element of an image like this. And there was something so direct and so quiet about this image um, that it really affected me when I started to go taking pictures. There was something that was totally about him, but you don't know, I don't know, and I don't think anyone really knows anything about this particular person, and yet you can't really look away from it. It makes you really question who he is, you know, what was happening in his life right before this image, what was happening right after, um, and it almost like he becomes the potential a character in a play. This is a, another image that had a huge effect on me. I don't know why, but even though the first image was a, was a Bruce Weber image that probably ran in vogue, um, all the rest of the photographers, when I started getting into photography, didn't really come from fashion. They really all came from, from the street, you know, famous street photographers like August Sander, Brassai, and um, Cartier-Bresson. And, and again, like I was just saying, that uh, you know, even though these were street photographs, you can't help but look at the fashion element. You know, in a, photograph like this, one of his most famous photographs, you know, most of us look at this and because they're dressed so differently, I think a lot of people misunderstand what they're really seeing in this photograph. You know, there's something very elegant about this. The guy's dressed up and the girl's looking all fancy and, and yet this was really what he shot were the real dive bars of, of his time. 
So anyone looking at these images at his time would have recognized right away that this was kind of a, a low class group of people. But you know, we kind of lose that thread over time. And you, it again loses the facts. The facts about this photograph, most of us don't bring anything to. It allows us to dream and make up our own story. I mean, I'm sure a lot of us, would, if we didn't know the facts of this, would think, wow, they look so elegant with their hat and tie and you know, their curly Q hair. And um, again, that's something that I think is very, it was very important to me. And I think of the, the best street, the, the, the current street fashion, I think it's a, a, an underlining theme. You know, it's, again, the facts I think are very unimportant, but if you can make someone dream as opposed to telling them, you know, what, what skirt length to wear or what brand that is. Um, this is another photographer, uh, Sidibe, from Africa. And, you know, he just shot around in his area, not necessarily his neighborhood, but in his area in general. And he would shoot the parties, and he had a little studio, and, and people would come to him and be shot. And he just had such a consistent, beautiful artistry about the way that he shot. And yet, you know, you can say that about him. And, you know, this is a, a, another image that really means a lot to me. There's something so graceful and so elegant. And again, it's, it's not a fashion shot, but you, can, you, you can't help but look at the fashion element and the gracefulness of this image. Um, you know, her dress, the, how elegantly she moves. Um, and yet it was just very, I have one of his books, and he would go to parties like this for several years and just shoot and shoot and shoot. And, you know, this is just one image, but it is much, much, much more beautiful than most of the ones that he took. Most of the photographs he took at these parties were very average. So when I look at an image like this, um, it's one of those that reminds me to just keep going out and shooting. You know, maybe in an entire year you come up with one or two great images, but you keep shooting and shooting and shooting. And um, so this is one of those that really reminds me that even though you're out on the street every day and you just have to keep shooting and hopefully every once in a while you come up with a, a really strong image like this. This is a, a photographer who really, I think, has never been thought of as a fashion photographer. His name is Bruce Davidson. And, he did a, a whole story about uh, New York on East 100th Street. And I think he was, they were really trying to bring to light the sadness of what was happening on East 100th Street at that time and, and the uh, poverty. And he was using those images to try and bring more money to that, that whole area, um, which he did. East 100th Street now just looks totally re, uh, reformed. But you know, images like this, Again, you, I think, are so beautiful. There's something so gentle about these young girls. And you can't help but see the, an, influence, a, an influence that something like this could be, a, again, on today's street style uh, blogs that are so popular. Those are, you know, these first couple of people, the, um, Bruce Davidson and Helen Levitt, were really kind of street photographers. But there was a, a group of photographers like um, Lartigue who grew up in a very wealthy area who in Paris and who kind of shot what he saw and what he loved. So even though he really wasn't working for a Vogue or anything that was stamped as a, as a fashion magazine or a fashion authority, he was really shooting from his heart. And of course, I think anybody that does any kind of photography now that has anything to do with fashion, Lartigue, I think, has to be one of the most natural um, natural influences because it was shot from such a true place. I mean, I don't think these images, he was so young when he shot this, they didn't end up being um, seen for years and years afterwards. But you know, to me, when I'm in Paris, I always think of these shots because it's something so natural about it. Same thing, there was a guy named um, Slim Ahrens who was kind of in between, not really a street photographer, but shot the life of people all around the world and kind of the good life and somewhere in between like a Bruce Davidson that's shooting the poverty of East 100th Street to someone like Slim Ahrens who was really shooting the, the most beautiful elements of the, of the world. I think somewhere in there is something that's very interesting and can be very real. This one was really influential to me. I think it really, when I started the blog, I thought, you know, how beautiful that world is. It's one of his most famous photographs, obviously Clark Gable and Gary Cooper. And it's one that when I shot this the other day, 
um, I was having a lunch in Florence with a lot of the coolest guys that I know. And they were just outside, just like this. And I had gone out. I wonder where all the guys from lunch were. We were filming this. And I, I realized we were in Italy, and they were probably outside smoking. So I walked out and was, I don't know, I was checking my camera and looked up and saw them just in this exact position. And it you know, made me think of this, that just, it's one of those kind of images that happens so naturally that when we look back at this, it has the same kind of effect, you know, who these guys are. It's one of the reasons that, like when I shoot this film or when I shoot these guys for this particular lunch, I always do it in black and white. I always, we never interview them. We never talk to them or do very much about the, in, the individual guys because the, the truth of it is less interesting than the romance of it. So we always, I always like to keep a veil between who they really are because they're very nice guys, but they're not that interesting. And I think it helps. You know, if you guys knew what they were saying at the lunch, it wouldn't be that interesting. So I think, uh, there, again, this idea of keeping the, the romance, allowing the romance is, is the most interesting part sometimes. Again, not telling the facts, but, but telling the romance or allowing for the romance. Um, this was one of the first images that I felt like that I took where I was really kind of capturing the same kind of thing that I was inspired by, by someone like a, a Bruce Davidson or, or a Helen Levitt. I shot this in, um, in Pennsylvania, and this girl was selling blueberries with her mom on the side of the road. And I love it that it really plays on two elements, you know, a very true portrait of a strong young girl. I was actually just dropping my girl off at gymnastics camp in Pennsylvania, and she was about the same age as this girl, and I could not be more different, you know, that you can tell this girl's feet are heavy and, and, and strong, you know, from walking on a gravel road all summer the very defensive kind of way that she stands, and yet there's a very kind of pretty fashion element that you can't not see with these kind of two, this beautiful floral dress and this apron and, and this still very kind of tender young girl. Um, this was the kind of image that you don't get every day, but I always makes my day when I get something like that. Or an image like this, you know, everybody really seems to like this image, and it happened so quick, I don't even remember taking it. Um, I think we were leaving from something, and it was just one of those that you, you see the potential of it, you know, that shot of red at the bottom of her shoes, the snow, that you can't really see who she is, this, the idea of warmth and almost a cocoon around her, that it happens so quick, you almost have to see it before it happens, anticipate it before it happens, to try and get it up, get it composed, Hopefully you, you preset the camera for the weather, so hopefully your, your, your shutter's going to be quick enough. But um, again, hopefully this is one of those images that uh, people will look at and see both a fashion element but also a, a real element. This is another one that is kind of a fun one, a little more sexy, a little more edgy than what you usually get for street fashion. This is one that I was actually really happy with. The guys that I had lunch with that I was telling you about that we filmed, um, they, these films are really seen all over the world, and the blog is seen, luckily, all over the world. It's, you have over one million unique visitors a month, and you kind of lose track. You know, you know there's a lot of people looking at the site, you just don't know how many. And uh, I was in South Africa in Soweto, and, and a friend of mine knew this young guy, knew he was there, and he lives in a, in a cinder block house with an outhouse and but he is so he's able to see the internet he's able to follow the photographs from there and, and to imagine just like I did imagine what that world was like so he when we met him he was had a suit that he had bought secondhand take had taken into a tailor had it all tailored exactly the way that he wanted the way that he felt the guys in the pictures that, that I take would do it and he's even wearing a hat with this kind of Italian the colors of the Italian flag because he knew that this guy that I shoot named Luca, that it was his birthday that day. I didn't even know when Luca's birthday was. <laughs> and, but I thought it was so touching that when I was telling this story to the guys in, in Florence, for them to get a sense of how much they mean to, to young men all around the world, this guy Fabrizio from Brazil, he just starts crying. It was so beautiful to see them realize how much those images of them mean to guys all over the world that they'll never meet. This was one that um, I was very happy with. I was on my bike 
going very fast up. Well, I'd seen the girl go across Lafayette, and I was on Prince in New York. And I saw her kind of fly by, and again, you know, the fashion element, you know, this very kind of open back dress and the, tra the, 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 the tail of the dress flying off. You know, when you see that go by, you think, oh, that'll, that'll be a great shot. And so I tried to catch up with her on my bike, and we're both flying up Lafayette, cars whizzing by. And, and I'm shooting. I didn't tell her that I was shooting. And, and because of the, the light on her back, I'm focusing on her back and trying to get the exposure right while I'm, while I'm shooting, making sure I don't get hit by a car. And I'm on the inside of her shooting, shooting into the street. And it's not until I get a little bit closer and realize that it looks too busy with all the cars behind her that I go over to the other side. I'm on the outside of her shooting into the, into the sidewalk that I didn't even realize she had a metal leg, which was totally shocking. I didn't even see that when she flew by. And so then it's one of those where you're really in the moment and you have to, I could tell we were going into this little zone where this light was reflecting off of the building across the street. And I thought, you know, if I can just get one frame where she's in that little pocket of light and it's reflecting off of the, the metal on her leg, that could be a really great shot. And again, it was like the, the one of the woman in the snow. You're just trying to time it and you have no idea until you get back home. I mean, even though I'm shooting digital, but when you're flying on the street uh, on a bike, you don't really have a chance to review. But that was one of the images I was really happy with that, again, plays on those two elements of a a fashion element, but then also hopefully a good street shot. And then this is the last one I think, um, you know, that I really love because sometimes when you're looking for a shot like the other ones, you just end up in the right place at the right time for a shot like this. And it was actually very controversial on the site um, because a lot of people felt, you know, that's one thing that's great about a blog is you can really have a great conversation. Some people felt it was intrusive. Some people felt it was great. Um, I just remember seeing him go in and shaking his shirt out, and I was standing way back, much further away than when I got the shot. And, and he went back inside, and I, my hands were full with books I had just bought in Milan, and, and, uh, and I thought, oh, just, I hope he comes out again. I hope he comes out again, because I couldn't even get my camera up quick enough to shoot. And I just kept walking forward and kind of got myself in position in case he kind of shook out the, his shirt in the window again, and it, which he did. And it was just one of those moments where you really kind of hold your breath and just hope that you set all your settings right, that you're guessing the right way. And to me, it's one of, the, one of those images that it's not a typical one for me. It's not something I was looking for, but you just luck out sometimes. Because to me, it feels like, like, a, like, a, like a Velasquez or something with that. To have that much detail in his body and, and such a natural moment was something I really loved. But the themes I wanted to talk about, I was reading, a, there's a great photographer named Edward Weston. And the, um, the thing I thought that was really interesting when I was reading is basically like a diary of his. And the part that I thought that was so interesting, he was a, a great photographer mainly in the 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s, but that when he was working on images, you know, for him a photograph wasn't a photograph until it was printed, until it was a physical thing, something you could hold. And you know, I think about how we shoot now and I think about my little girls, you know, now photography is so easy to do and probably Kids, you know, super young take more photographs than, than any other time uh, before because it's just so easy to do. And yet, they never print their photographs. You know, what photographs mean to them is something totally different. It's really, a, it's become something that was a thing that you put on the wall or that you, you share, or that you put in the closet and share when friends come over, to something that now really kind of helps illustrate a point. You know, photography is, has become something that is um, it's almost mystical, you know, because it's, it's there, but it's not really there. It's something that's so incredibly important in our lives, and yet it's not a thing anymore. Um, and so it's really, I think, going to be very interesting. Like, there's a great photographer named um, Eggleston, who's very famous for shooting these beautiful kind of abstract scenes. They're all about color and, and saturation of color in these kind of odd forms, and yet I don't know if anyone would really appreciate those images quite the same way if they only related to them on the internet or an iPhone or something. Those kind of images almost have to be printed. So I think we're at a very interesting moment now where this next generation, how they look at images. Will we have another Eggleston that really sees things 
in such an abstract way because if you're not printing, which is almost a lost form, lost art form, it'll be very interesting to see where this next generation goes because I think they're gonna, the next generation of artists are gonna think of images in a very different way. So that's one thing. The other thing I thought that I've been seeing that I think is very interesting is, you know, now with the invention of Twitter and um, especially Tumblers, I think we've almost come full circle now that we've almost come full circle to um, hieroglyphics in the sense that like with a Tumblr, I might not even know this person or maybe it's a Tumblr created by someone in China and we can't communicate. We don't speak the same language, we would never meet and yet I can look at this person's Tumblr and just through the images that they choose could know all about this person, their dreams, what kind of girls they like, what kind of food they like, where they would want to go. So I think it's really interesting that we've now almost come full circle again that we can communicate with just images, just like to me, like hieroglyphics. I think it was very interesting that, and hopefully you know, this will continue. I mean, I think it's great that you can look, all you have to do is be able to find them, but be able to find like-minded people and, and be able to share in that way, in a way that we've never been able to before. I think that's you know, one of the fantastic things about, about images on the internet is just how easily we're able to share if people are able to, to, to learn how to communicate through images. The last idea that I wanted to talk about was this idea of, with something like Instagram or like with my blog, in the past, when you put a photograph, like I'm very happy that um, people, my contemporaries can see these photographs and relate to them and like them or not like them or whatever. Um, and there was some of that in the, in the past. But the thing that we're really capturing now that we've never been able to capture before is a contemporary reaction to the images that I'm showing. Like I, I like to think of my images not just in the contemporary moment of right now, but how people are going to think of them 100 years from now. But what we've never been able to do is take a photograph, put it on the internet, and capture what people in this very moment think of that image. And I think that would be so fascinating to be able to go back and and if Brassai was able to take his images and put them on the internet and hear what people in 1930 thought about that image, the way, what they thought about those people, the way they were dressed, hanging out at these seedy bars. It's something I think, you know, there's been a lot of good and bad about fashion blogs and about blogs in general, but I think it's something that we're capturing now that we've never been able to before. And um, I think it's one of the things, one of the best things, you know, I think 100 years from now, people are gonna be able to look at our images and think, you know, wow, they were still discussing whether cigarettes were bad or fur or a lot of these topics that are very important right now. Um, so I think that's one of the things I've been seeing that I think is very interesting concept and like very interesting for us to be able to read and, and think about how people are gonna to relate to it in the future.